So in the previous video, we saw that if we made this A large enough, then we could have the case where our envelope contains the same information as the message. This also ensures us that we don't have to somehow come up, we don't have to do some special trick to get a, a coherent demodulation, right? So when, when we are dealing with the DSB signal, the DSB-SC signal, right, we were realizing, ah, oh, shoot, you know, we have this uh, frequency shift, we have this time delay, so we're gonna ha it's gonna be really hard to come up with a, a coherent cosine wave that's identical to what was transmitted. And so if we select our A to be smart, right, we're gonna see that the envelope contains that same information. So let's consider a, di a few different cases for how we should select A. So in case one, it's very easy, right? If we wanna meet this criteria, A plus the message is greater than zero. Well, if our message just happens to be larger than zero for all T, well, then this is easy. A can be zero because the message is all already larger than zero the whole time. So the uh, envelope is, is going to meet those criteria. The envelope would have the same information as the message. Well, let's consider a more normal case where sometimes, right, your message goes below zero, right? So you have your cosine or your some oscillating wave that your message contains. And sometimes in time, your message is, is smaller than uh, zero. So within this, we have two subcases. All right, and, and this is the most typical, right? So normally your message is less than zero for some time t, this is typical. And within this, we have two subcases of what this could look like. Uh, the first case is that it's symmetric, right? So this is like a cosine wave, right? The top and the bottom, right? It goes from one to minus one and it bounces back and forth bet equally between some one and, and minus one. So in this case, right, it goes, your message stays in between some MP where your MP in the, for this would be just equal to one. However, right, you could have a asymmetric case Right, where for some reason your message uh, goes really high, but not really low, let's say. So it goes up to two, but only down to minus one. And so for this case, it's a little bit asymmetric. Your um, min is not equal to the negative of the max, right? And so uh, right, minus one is not equal to minus two. So in this case, you have an asymmetric. So for each of these cases, we'll discuss a different way of choosing your A so that we can ensure that our A plus the message is always larger than zero. And visually, looking at this uh, visually, we can see here, right, for case one, right, this is the case one um, in blue, where for some reason, right, our message, it never goes below this zero. And so for that, right, the message is greater than zero all the time. All right, great, we don't have to do anything. A plus the message is always greater than zero. Case two is the symmetric case. The symmetric case right where we have the top is equal to positive three, the bottom is equal to negative three. And for the symmetric case, right, we could define the top being like some MT, MP, and the bottom minus MP. And your message just oscillates only in between minus MP and MP. And in this case, your m min is equal to the negative of the m max. So m min is equal to the negative of the max. And the last case, the asymmetric case, in this case, right, the highest it goes is four, but the lowest it goes is only minus two. So it's a little bit offset here. So the m min is minus two, the m max is four. So m min of minus two, right, this is not equal to minus four. And so this case is a little bit asymmetric. So for the, the typical case where it is symmetric, uh, we call this a zero offset, right? Because it's, it's bouncing back and up and down between some minus MP and MP. And in this case, we will select our A so that it's larger than the negative of the M min, or, or you could say it's, it's larger than MP, which is the highest it goes. And we can furthermore define this ratio mu, we'll call it an index, a modulation index. We'll define a modulation index so that our modulation index is a ratio of the whatever the, the maximum that your message goes to and your value of A. And you should make sure that your modulation index is somewhere between zero and one. If your mu, 
if your modulation index mu exceeds one, then that means that uh, MP is larger than A. And so you have not quite moved your whole message up above zero and your envelope is going to be a little bit distorted. So in the zero offset case, right, we should choose A so that it's bigger than MP. So this is our MP, right? We have it oscillating between minus MP and MP. So we should choose A that's greater than MP is equal to three. And our modulation index, <clears throat> we could then choose a mu so that we have three over some A value such that it is in between zero and one. So our A should be some number that's big enough so that it's between zero and one. So our A, right, this should be um, at least three, uh, if, if not bigger, right? So if A is, let's say A is four, then our modulation index is three fourths. And we can see that we would move this up four. So if our lowest point is minus four, if we were to choose an A of four, this would move it from here up one, two, three, four, so that the, the lowest that it becomes is one. And therefore the whole message, right? This whole thing would be shifted upwards so that it's above zero all the time. So that's the zero offset case. Now the non-zero offset case is slightly more complicated. We'll still define a mu that relates our uh, maximum, minima, and our A value, but we'll, we'll need to choose something slightly different because we have this uh, difference between the min and max where it's a little bit asymmetric. By defining our mu, the index this way, we'll be able to still keep it such that the index must be between zero and one in order to lift that whole message up, lift that whole message up above zero. So for this case, right in the asymmetric case right here, the lowest is minus two, but the highest is four. And so the min is not equal to the negative of the max. And so we'll define our mu this way. And when we do it, we keep it such that the offset uh, for this non-zero offset, we have we have the requirement that the index must be between zero and one. And so long as you select your A such that your index overall becomes between zero and one, you'll, you will have moved this whole message. You will have shifted everything up so that it is above zero and your envelope contains the same information as your original message. <clears throat>